If you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of the Chewy HI-12 with its retina screen, excellent build quality, and great price. And you also know that I'm a big fan of its little brother, the HiBook Pro, 10.1 inch, high res display, and good price. Next up in the Chewy family is the Chewy Hi-10 Pro. It's basically the same body as HiBook Pro, although it doesn't have as high res a screen, but it has USB 3.0 support. Let's find out if it's worth your money. Chewy hit a home run with the Chewy HI-12 and the HiBook Pro. Both have high-res screens, both have good prices. Well, we have another one in the Chewy lineup. It's the Chewy HI-10 Pro. It's a dual boot, two-in-one, that Banggood sent over for review. Let's find out if it has what it takes to compete in the two-in-one arena. What you get under the hood is the Intel Atom X5 Z8300, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. It weighs 1.24 pounds without the keyboard and 2.43 pounds with the keyboard dock. Now speaking of the keyboard dock, it's the same one used in the Chewy HiBook Pro. A $47 accessory, well worth it. Shipping took about a week and a half to two weeks from China and it comes in the typical packaging we normally see from Banggood, a styrofoam container which is used in order to save on the shipping costs. What you get in the box obviously is the Chewy itself along with some documentation and the power adapter which is 5 volts, 3 amps and charges via USB Type-C. Chewy made the decision to use the same keyboard dock as they did in the HiBook Pro. Check out my full review of the Chewy HiBook Pro for more in-depth review of the keyboard. But suffice it to say it has decent key travel and it has a decent trackpad. Not the best in the world, but certainly serviceable. It's an all aluminum keyboard and it has two additional USB ports, both full size USB Type-A. Unfortunately, they are not USB 3.0, but only 2.0. A bit of a disappointment. And just like the HiBook Pro, this also has a 10.1 inch IPS display, but with a lower resolution, a full HD of 1920 by 1200. That's 224 pixels per inch, and it does get bright at 350 nits. It's overall a very good screen with very good viewing angles and good color accuracy, but not quite as high res as the Chewy HiBook Pro, but good in its own right. Now, I do like the fact that it does have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. But unlike the Chewy HiBook Pro, this is a non-laminated display, which means there is a slight gap about a millimeter or so between the panel and the glass itself. Nonetheless, this is still a very nice display. Now, unlike the HiBook Pro, there is a pen that you can get that you can use for writing on this device. It's available from banggood.com. I will put the link below. I don't have one on hand to test, but when I do, I will definitely update you as to how well it works. As far as ports are concerned, here's what you get. You get one of your two side firing speakers and you have a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Moving along, you have your USB type C and this is where you'll charge your device. And you also have a micro USB type A to connect to other peripherals and the like. And you get a micro HDMI port to connect to a TV or to a monitor. Nice touch. And to round it out is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Moving along to the other side is your other side firing speaker. We'll talk more about the sound later in the video. As far as the cameras are concerned, you get a two megapixel front facing webcam and it was of decent quality, not the best in the world, but certainly serviceable for Skype and video conferencing when you need it in a pinch. And on the back is the two megapixel camera and it's okay. Again, I wouldn't be taking any pictures with a two in one anyway, or any tablet for that matter. But if you need it in a pinch, it is certainly serviceable as you can see by the photo taken here. The Chewy HI-10 Pro is a dual boot tablet just like the iBook Pro, but unlike the iBook Pro, this runs Remix OS 2.0 rather than a standard Android 5.1 as we've been seeing on these two-in-ones from China. What I like about Remix OS is that it's very Windows-like in the fact that you can do multitasking and it has a very small footprint unlike Windows 10 Home. But you can do a lot with this and I think it does give Android a little bit more of a desktop feel and look to it. Overall, I am a big fan of Remix OS and any subsequent updates will make it even better.
As far as Windows is concerned, it's pretty much what we normally see on the X5 Z8300. eMMC used here is a Samsung variant, which is always good to see. And on the Crystal Disk Mark scores, it did a 136.6 on the read and a somewhat pedestrian 76.8 on the right. This is pretty much what we've been seeing out of these two-in-ones from China with the X5 Z8300 and this kind of performance. On the Geekbench 4.0 test, it did pretty much what we'd expect, a 1725 on the multi-core score. Again, this is not going to be a screamer as far as performance is concerned, and it definitely is not a high-end gaming machine, either on the Windows side or even on the Android side. But you can do some very light gaming, but you can consume media, and this is very good for web browsing, emails. I wouldn't be tasking it anything more than that. In terms of wireless, what we have here is obviously Bluetooth 4.0 and it uses the wireless 802.11n Realtek drivers. In the end, I had no issues with wireless. Usually when we get these Chinese tablets, the sound and the speakers aren't that great and this seems to be no exception. This really doesn't have anything exceptional in terms of volume as far as bass. The sound is a bit tinny. It does get somewhat loud, but overall I wouldn't say these are outstanding speakers. They are certainly serviceable when you don't want to use your headphones. Now speaking of headphones, they worked well as far as the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Sound was very good. There wasn't any interference. At less than $200, expectations should be tempered as far as the sound is concerned. Battery life on the Chewy HI10 Pro was pretty good. I was able to run my battery rundown test and here's the deal. On the idle test that we did without wireless LAN minimum brightness, it did 8 hours and 51 minutes. My Wi-Fi surfing test on the Edge browser did 6 hours and 45 minutes. Watching a movie, H.264 at 1080p, did 7 hours, 3 minutes, and under heavy load, maximum brightness a little above 3 hours. It has a 6,500 milliampere battery and has quick charge, but it took about 3 hours and 32 minutes to go from 0% to 100%. Not that great. I had a very nice time reviewing this tablet. I think it offers a lot of value for the price, and I really think this is something to offer students and people who want a secondary tablet to get some work done. Here's what I like about this device. First, I like its beautiful, bright, full HD display with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. I like its very good build quality and its good battery life. I also like the fact that this is Type-C charges at 5 volts, 3 amps, and that the USB Type-C port is 3.0, unlike the Chewy iBook Pro. I also like the fact that it has two full-size USB ports on the keyboard dock. The fact that it's dual boot, Windows 10, and Remix OS, and if you didn't know by now, I'm a big fan of Remix OS. But there are things I don't like about this tablet. First, I don't like its speakers, something that plagued the Chewy HiBook Pro as well, and the fact that it doesn't have full-size USB port on the tablet itself. And it's a bit heavy with the keyboard dock attached. But overall, I think this is a very good buy, especially for students and those wanting a secondary tablet but don't want to spend a lot of money, but still able to get some productivity and work done, as well as consume media. And that's why I'm going to give the Chewy HI10 Pro a solid 7 out of 10. This is definitely a good buy. So what do you think about the Chewy HI10 Pro? Do you think it checks all the boxes you want in an affordable two-in-one from China? Does it have the nice screen? I think it does. Does it have the good build quality? Certainly does. And does it have the good price? Absolutely. It co all comes together, in my opinion, to affordable secondary tablet, great for students, great for something you just want to knock around with and not break the bank. This really hits all those points. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know if it's something you've been considering. Have you picked one up? How has it been working for you if you did? And if you haven't and have been debating whether or not to pick this up or the HiBook Pro. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Coming very soon to AMD Tech. I'm very excited because we have what I've been waiting for for a while, to something to replace my 2012 MacBook Pro 15 inch that I've been using faithfully for the last couple of years, and it's time to replace it. So when Apple announced the 2016 MacBook Pro with the touch bar and touch ID, I got excited. They've reduced the size, they've changed the keyboard, which I'm a little bit on the fence about, and they've also eliminated some things that I need as a videographer, such as the SD card slot, as well as the other ports that they eliminated. But we are expecting it this week, arriving, unboxing, and then followed by our review, so stay tuned for that. 
And I'm also going to put it head to head with the Dell XPS 15 with similar specs, 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of SSD storage. That has a dedicated NVIDIA GPU. So I want to see which one's better, the one that Apple went with or the one that Dell went with. We're going to go head to head very soon. They both have Skylake processors, by the way. Nothing uh, seventh, seventh gen, not yet at least on the Dell XPS 15. So stay tuned for that. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's something out there you think I should review. Hey, I'll do my best. I'll try to make it happen. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.